And good afternoon. Welcome to the Alex Rabina Radio Show. I'm your host, hanging out in uh, beautiful downtown Newhall, California, at the uh, station, hometown, your hometown station, KHTS. And I'm uh, on the radio with my good friend, Erin Aquaviva. She is uh, an amazing mom, wife, daughter, and she's also an educational coach. So what's an educational coach? An educational coach is someone who helps people discover their own truth and wisdom through learning with an educational background. And so uh, thanks for joining me on the show. Thank you for having me. So I want to talk today about homeschool learning. And um, I know for me, not really having a good understanding of what homeschools are about, because my understanding of it is probably, you know, outdated. (laughs) You know, through the through the years, homeschool has, I think, just evolved in such a a, a very unique way. There's so many uh, unique options to choose from, and so I'd love to you for you to talk a little bit about what homeschool learning and what homeschools look like today, both traditional and then the unconventional way. So I absolutely love this topic, and um, if we had all day to talk about all the options in homeschool, that would be amazing. Um, so my so my background and 20 years ago in teaching or 15 years ago when I very first started I would probably have the same that same outlook on homeschool that you have that you know kids sit at home with their parents one on one they there's not a lot of opportunity for social a- interactions um and Cause there's a lot of stigmas around that too right like homeschool kids are awkward or they don't get they you know what I mean they don't get the time the one-on-one time with other kids to play around, so maybe they're secluded. or I mean, you could make up your own stories about it based on what limited information you have about it, but it's just it's not like that. No, absolutely not. So there's so many opportunities for social within the homeschool community and so many um, uh, many communities that are, that are being built around homeschool um, related to what different parents and families want to focus on in their, you know, in their home. And um, so I started working with homeschool families about six years ago, maybe, um, as a facilitator. I'm a, you know, credentialed teacher and uh, kind of found my way into working with homeschool families um, as an opportunity to have that flexibility and time for my family and uh, fell in love what, <laughs> with what these families <laughs> were doing with You're their like, children. I, I think I might want some of that. Absolutely. So I, you know, th- traveling and uh, learning through hands-on opportunities and um learning centers and uh, opportunities for the arts and what can really happen in homeschool, which is just this heightened personalized learning, the most personalized learning that you can probably ever give your child. Uh, so I worked with homeschool families for a couple years, and then I decided to take the leap with my own children who were attending a school that is very personalized learning, um, a school that I work for, uh, SCVI, and I lead schools, who's, who, and I still work for them, um, who support that personalized learning, support the uh, emotional growth, support the, you know, get out of your comfort zone, um, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, I think. Um, so that school was already bringing that up in my own children, and I was just ready to take it to the next level and um, have the opportunity to work with them on what I would like to focus on as a parent, which is um, the social-emotional growth, while also allowing for them to explore what their interests are, um, what they're really great at, how they learn, because they learn so different. I have two children, and... I love them so much, and they're so beautiful and so unique and so different and such a gift in such different ways. And um, in the year and a half or almost two years now of homeschool journey with them, I've had the opportunity to really explore how they both learn and focus on that. Um, and then to paint the picture of the homeschool world, it is that's a challenge um, because there's so many opportunities out there. Um, I kind of touched on the idea of um, kids going to learning centers or different places. I think parents think, I've had a lot of parents say, oh no, I could never homeschool my own children. We'd drive each other crazy. Um, Why do you think that is? Why do you think they say that? Do you think it's because they have a certain, they've painted a certain picture of it just being one way, which is I have to be the teacher and I don't know how to teach them, right? Yes. Absolutely. So um, I think there's lots of reasons that parents think that, but I think that is the 
what number one fear or concern is that I am not able to teach my children, you know, what they need to learn. And to that I say, oh my gosh, my, te- my kids have so many teachers and I have a teaching background, but you know, we have tutors, um, we have my learning center, our learning center that our kids attend um, and learning centers in the community and um, so many opportunities for them where I get to focus on what is my um, gift and my passion, which is really working with my own children on their emotional growth and personal growth where other people work with them in the topics that they're really great at. So it's not, it's not all on me. Now, some parents do the, the whole curriculum with their, with their kids and they are comfortable with that and they feel great. And that's also wonderful too. And lots of opportunity with that as well. So it doesn't need to look just one way. So we do have that traditional homeschool um, setting as well. And um, that works for many families as well, especially um, any learners that might be you know, having challenges where being in the classroom and being around a lot of people is just too overstimulating for them. And it's beautiful that they can be in an environment where we lower that filter and they're able to actually learn because they're one-on-one either with their parent or a tutor. Um, So, and then that would be kind of the more traditional sense where my children are, you know, they're, they're off at adventure play, you know, going and having playtime and, and really exercising what they've learned socially and emotionally. And, um, and then they're sitting, you know, with a tutor at home one-on-one sometimes, and they're at, you know, um, our beautiful learning center a lot of the time, um, connecting with other kids, other homeschool kids, growing that community and, um, building relationships (laughs) in that. Um, so, Uh, So yes, it it can work in so many different ways. And I think that parents, that's what I love. I love talking to parents about this. And I love saying to them, yes, you can do it. And just because I'm in education doesn't mean that I didn't have those same fears. In fact, I think I reached out to you right when I started homeschooling my kids in complete nervous breakdown almost. Like, I can't do this. I can't homeschool my kids. And then working through it and, you know, really just holding on and saying, yes, we can. We can do this together. And um, there are so many options and so many ways to work our homeschool journey. So I love working with families and having them realize that and see that, including, you know, online support. I mean, there's just, there's so much out there when it comes yeah, to homeschooling. What I, what I love most about this option when it comes to homeschooling is um, you get an opportunity as the leader of your kids or leader of your family to be able to decide which course you want to put them in. Mm-hmm. and how to direct them in which way and put them in front of other um, experienced um, heroes in our community to be taught. That's what I love most is that you can uh, course design your own, custom design your own course for your kids to go through uh, through a lot of these learning centers. So t- talk to me a little bit more about learning centers. What is a learning center for those people that don't even know what a learning center is and have no clue about uh, what's possible for them? Well, I think learning centers are across the board. It could be anything from a center that offers tutoring to homeschool kids and then also after school programs for kids that are in school all day. Um, But there are um, other learning centers that actually are there for the homeschool community. So a learning center would be somewhere where kids can go and take a class in an area like you were saying that the parents have said, you know, these are the people that I want my kids to be in front of, or this is the material or the curriculum that I want my kids to be in front of. So whether it be, you know, um, your kid is uh, uh, innovative and a maker. So you find a maker class somewhere at a learning center, or they're really into science. And these, you know, this learning center happens to offer amazing science classes. Or they're into music and you get them into a DJ class or something, or just you know, fans the flame and and has them be excited and passionate about whatever art form that they're creatively expressing themselves in. Absolutely. Or coding or whatever it might be. Or cooking or whatever, whatever it is that lights them on fire, you can course correct them and put them in there where they're learning and developing, not just necessarily um, didactic learning, but they're learning uh, skills. Um, They're learning about themselves. Yes. What works, what doesn't work. Um, they're, they're learning a lot about their thoughts. They're learning, uh, discovering some of their fears. They're, they're being challenged. I think, I think it's like it's real world um, experiential breakthroughs that they're having. It is, and it just allows them for a process to see what their interests are. Like mm. it's really exploring them rather than that kind of cookie cutter sit in a classroom, which works for some students, works well for some students. 
However, there are a lot of kids that want to be learning in a certain way or feel really passionate about something. And it's a, the homeschool community and then learning centers provide that opportunity for them to explore those passions, interests, um, tackle some of the, you know, step outside of their comfort zone, tackle some of those um, fears that they may have, fears that they may, may even have around learning. And um, they're able to kind of work through those in a safe, I would say learning centers also provide an opportunity for kids to work um, together with other kids, but in a smaller setting. So most learning centers, um, classrooms don't go more than 15 kids in a classroom. So it's kind of this beautiful ratio for, um, for teachers and students. Um, so that also would be another benefit of, of the learning center community within the homeschool community. So what I'm thinking about is like if my kids are going to a traditional school system and they get their classes, right? That's usually how it goes. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you got your classes. And then you look at your, open it up. In and high you look, school and in junior right, high, yeah. yeah. And it's like, okay, here are your main classes. And then, oh, I wasn't able to get into computers or I wasn't able to get into whatever that hobby is that you are excited about, drama, or the class was full. With, with homeschooling, you can keep adding on additional courses that get your kids excited. Mm -hmm. You can have three or four or seven additional things that, that your kids are into or they love or that they're passionate about or they've shown interest in. You can sign them up for as many as you want and get them. You're in control, basically, of where you're putting your kids and the road that you're um, kind of nudging them down that road to, to do, be doing the things that they love doing. Absolutely, you're in control, and it, it starts to also give um, the kids the choice in, you know, like they're going to have choices. They're going to start to need hey, to make you, choices in life. what do you want to do next life. semester? What well, classes really, do you want to I really take? like that one class, the whatever class it is, and it's, you know. And then I'm sure a lot of centers, they open up space for you to come in and try it out for a couple of days to see if it's a fit or not. Too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Most, most of the learning centers that my kids have been to, there's that – you know, time period where, hey, if they don't like it or it's not their jam, then they can pick something else, you know, or So what would be the, the starting class. process? If, if I'm if I'm listening to this show and I'm like, I, you know what? I want that. Like I'm, uh, you know, maybe one of the parents at home is, uh, you know, working part time or not working at all or their their job looks in a different way. But they have the time to be able to, uh, you know, lead their kids down the, their own educational journey. And, and, and they're like, I want to try it out for a year. Where would you start? Do you go to your local school and ask them about information on homeschooling, their homeschool program, or how does that work? Absolutely. I would start with your homeschool. Um, a lot of uh, homeschools within the traditional setting might be a little bit more um, – Specific, like they might not have as much choice within that. I would say um, charter schools look into local charter schools and what kind of independent study program they have. Or um, does it seem like the charter schools are more? They embrace the homeschool I would process say, a little bit more. So, uh, so there's many charter schools that are just built around independent study and okay. the homeschool um, opportunity. Um, so. So yes, and 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 the whole purpose behind charter schools was to create this option, this other option for learning um, for kids, and um, so so charter schools are kind of leading the way in that community. Uh, out here, we have uh, many wonderful charter schools that support uh, the homeschool community. Um, I've worked for I lead schools for, uh, like I said, probably six, seven, eight years. And I've loved um, working for that community. So they have th their program, I Lead Exploration. I know that there's other homeschool communities out here, Inspire, and um, and others that I'm probably not even aware of. Uh, but there, but it does tend to be the charter school. So let's talk a little bit about the possibility of ha someone having some fear of, I'm afraid that if my child is homeschooled, that they're not going to get the credits Right. Because because if you go back, we're, we've been trained to think that we have to have a certain amount of credits to graduate. And then are the are the colleges going to, you know, uh, accept the credit accreditation that uh -huh. I've got and all those kinds of things. Yes. Let's talk about that a little bit. So um, I, I love this question and thank you for asking it so much to kind of like debunk that whole myth of um, not getting the credits that 
that students may need to get into college. Um, so as I mentioned, I work for iLead schools right now. I work for iLead online and our charter is fully accredited um, with uh, UC and USC approved courses. Um, we are a small charter that is growing and th we've had several learners who, who have graduated with us and accepted to major colleges and universities uh, across California and outside of the state as well. Uh, we also, within the charter school network, um, when they have the appropriate accreditation, uh, those schools do count. And oftentimes we hear um, through a number of ways that uh, sometimes they look different on on a transcript because they did education a little bit differently and colleges are saying, oh, hmm, we're, we're curious about this and we, we want to see how this um, student learns. And we're also hearing that colleges as an opportunity to, you know, get into college because that is always a concern for parents. Um, colleges are starting to shift in the way that they um, deliver uh, their curriculum and material and how they're wanting to work with their students in a sense of moving more towards competencies and looking more at how students learn and focusing in that direction. So sometimes when kids come from a space where that's what they've been doing the whole time, which is focus on how they learn or focus on their passions or really developing skills in a certain area while still trying to be well-rounded, um, many colleges are looking at that and saying, hey, we want that student here on top of our schools being accredited. Yeah. So I've noticed this is just an observation of mine. It's not the truth or it's, you know, right. It's just an observation. I've noticed when I observe the kids that are in traditional schools, it's almost like they're being force fed what to think, how to think. And they're being force fed information as though um, it's like it's being spoon fed into them. What I'm noticing about either the learning centers or uh, homeschooling, it's more like an open space for you to discover for yourself some of the answers. Yes, you're still teaching, mm -hmm. but you're teaching more from um, having the kids be more in the question. And when kids are more in the question, it's more like you're giving them an opportunity for them to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. And you're and it's and my observation is that kids that are that are homeschooled and going to some of these learning centers, there's a space for them to really uh, own their own thoughts and and discover their own ability to to be creative and expressing themselves more. Where it seems like the kids that are in traditional school is just more like didactic information is being spoon fed into them. And they're just kind of being like sponges, and it's kind of more like uh, memorizing in it, memorizing the information, taking a test, and then going, "Okay, I got a great, I got a, a good grade." Mm -hmm. that, it's just that's just what I'm noticing now that I'm uh, been exposed to homeschooling and and some of these uh, different uh, ways of learning, mm -hmm. and I and I love it. I, yeah. I love that that we've gotten ourselves to a place where we can now, as parents, take control of, of our own kids' journey in, in learning. When we come back from the break, I want to talk specifically about um, the Evolve Life Center for Learning. It's a new learning center that we've created. Uh, we um, just got past our first year. Yeah. I'm very excited about that, and we have some success stories uh, uh, surrounding the leadership program that we've created. And so we'll talk a little bit more of that about that when we come back from the break. Stay tuned for more of the Alex Rubina Radio Show right here in your hometown station, KHTS. Santa Clarita, bed bugs are taking over our city. They've invaded our homes, our businesses, and most importantly, our sleep. If you have suspicious bites that appear nightly or have a bug that you need ID'd, your best option is to make one call to All Pro. We offer a 100% guarantee that your bed bug issues will be solved with heat in one treatment. No need to tent or spray your house with chemicals. Heat is all you need. Call 661 298 2200 or text me a bug picture to 661 645 0540. It's time to sleep tight again, SCV. The stress was unbelievable. Debbie Morris is a changed woman. A giant boulder's been lifted. Debbie called Made For You. I'd finished a day of work. Professional, residential, and commercial cleaning. Walk into my house. Made For You. It was an absolute pigsty. Weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or even one-time seasonal cleaning. Our mess kept growing. 255-2922. Even when we weren't home. 255-2922. Made For You rescued me. 
The Art Gallery of Santa Clarita Artists Association, located in downtown Newhall on 6th Street between Railroad and Main, features local members' original artwork with changing exhibits every two months. Purchase affordable art for your home or as gifts. Open Friday through Sunday or by appointment. Artists wishing to join the SCAA can visit SantaClaritaArtist.org, come to our free monthly meetings at Barnes & Noble, or stop by the gallery. For upcoming shows, check us out at SantaClaritaArtist.org. We make visual art visible. Marston's Restaurant has been a Pasadena landmark, voted the best breakfast in California by the Food Network magazine. Discover Marston's Santa Clarita location, open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Marston's also has a fantastic catering menu that adds a delicious twist to any event. And they cater picnic dinners for that memorable romantic date. Experience Marston's on Newhall Ranch Road and McBean, or log on to marstonsrestaurant.com. Santa Clarita luxury car owners are discovering Infinity of Valencia. Infinity of Valencia? Where's that? Infinity of Valencia, your gateway to luxurious driving, owns a state-of-the-art dealership in front of Valencia Auto Row. Why haven't I seen it? Infinity of Valencia can easily be seen as you drive on Magic Mountain Parkway opposite the Valencia Town Center. Oh, in front of Auto Row? You're right. Auto Row is behind Infinity of Valencia. Infinity of Valencia. Discover it in front of Auto Row. So easy to find. Hometown. Your hometown station. And welcome back to the Alex Rabina Radio Show. I'm your host, Alex Rabina. I'm an advanced life coach specialist. And today I'm in studio with Mrs. Erin Aquaviva. And together we co-created a learning center called Evolve. And it's designed to help develop emotional intelligence in our children. And I'm really excited about this because for the last 25 years in personal development and empowering youth to embrace and own their own power and uh, learn how to love themselves and learn how to express themselves freely and really do that type of work. Uh, started recently working with some of the littles. So I've been you know, going from teenagers now, you know, t- uh, 23 years, and now I'm starting to really uh, get at that. We got to get to them younger. And mm-hmm. so I'm excited to be in partnership with you in this new adventure. Talk to me a little bit about Evolve Life Center for Learning. What is it? And uh, as people are listening in, What do you want them to know about this center? So Evolve Life Center for Learning is one of those learning centers that we were discussing. We offer classes to homeschool families um, based in emotional intelligence and leadership uh, for for our youth. So um, obviously a main motivation with this for me is that I want this for my kids. And after working with you and how you work with um, teens and some of the youngers, um, my kids are uh, nine and ten, and so tapping into doing this emotional work and having um, kids get it that their emotions are valid and amazing, and they're guiding them and being aware of them and allowing themselves to uh, be vulnerable and, and kind of tapping into their authentic self uh, is really what this center is about. And so we started off with this youth leadership class that we taught over um, or you know facilitated over the past year. And we had a lot of success with that course that was really focused in having, you know, kids understand um, their emotions, being aware of their emotions, sharing their emotions, connecting with one another um, in a way that we don't see kids connect always um, on the day to day and um, understanding how powerful they are, you know, empowering them. So that's been this journey with this class, and now we've um, we've added other classes with people that align to what we're up to, align to um, what we're teaching kids, and kind of venturing out into different topics while still having that very main vein of emotional intelligence and leadership in our courses. This is one of the things that I really love about what we're doing is as we were course designing this, You know, I was thinking to myself, if I can help some children not develop their own specific insecurities, what could I do? What implement? What course can I create or exercise can I have inside of a course 
that invites these kids to partake in. And as they're partaking in it, it's um, slowly shutting down some of the insecurity that they're on that path. So here would be an example. If a child lives in a, in a, a big family mm -hmm. and never really is heard in that family and recognize that they have their own voice. And so they're always going around going, mom, mom, look what I got, dad, dad, you know, and they're, and they're constantly uh, looking for validation that whatever they're feeling or whatever they've gone through, that they need to express that. And if it's not being heard and validated, whether it's in the moment or it's just at the right timing, they're constantly, constantly for the rest of their life going to be searching to be validated out externally in the world in their 20s in their 30s and their 50s always looking for validation outside of them mm -hmm. but if we can create a course that the start of every class all we do is open up a free space for you to share and we all we meaning the whole class gets to listen to you intently mm -hmm. and allow you that space to be heard what kind of a gift is that right and validate what they're saying and their feelings yeah. and their and, and when you're done venting, you know, whatever the weekend came for you or maybe you lost your dog and you were afraid and that Monday morning, how do you get to work and how how do you start learning when you just came off of a very traumatic weekend or, you know, some fear came up for you? But how powerful is that to have a space for you as a six year old or seven year old to share that? And then to have the whole class listening to you and then respond with, we hear you mm -hmm. or something like that. Just to, to go, ah, now I'm ready to learn. Right. I think it's such an amazing experience for these, for these young individuals to be learning that. I mean, how many of us adults are walking around thinking we just got to stuff everything that we've experienced. We got to stuff our emotions. We got to just, you know, forget about that and move on and get our work done, right? Um, we've had, I've had some just even very personal experiences in my own life and my family where um, we realized we're stuffing. We're just, we're not, and then later on it's coming up and now we really can't do our jobs and we really can't function in life because this stuff is still with us, right? But if we're teaching these kids to just, Share it and get off of it. Be validated. Hey, we hear you. We see you. Our heart is with you. If it's, you know, something sad, we're sad with them. And then they get to move on. You know, Not, not only that, but they also get to make sense of what happened, mm -hmm. right? Like, if we don't make a big deal about it, if we don't say, if we don't make a comment like uh, that's right or wrong or shouldn't, mm -hmm. should or shouldn't, then they come to their own conclusion that, well, maybe that's just the way it life is it's just mm -hmm. it is what it is right? right and then they can then they can make sense of it and then let it go and then now they're freed up to be in a new moment rather than collecting a whole bunch of grievances and icky feelings that you've never processed or, or no one's helped you make sense of it so you're stuck carrying around all this baggage with you and wondering why you're struggling in your 20s or your 30s or your or your 70s still trying to figure out how to make your life work Absolutely. And I feel like in life, we're always going through something, right? And if we can get in the habit of sharing that in order to hear ourselves, in order to be heard, in order to share in a space with somebody that is really being with us about it, uh, I think that that's such a great skill for all, all of us to learn. And then we're not walking around with all that baggage, you know, and so having youth learning it and having even my own children sometimes say to me, you know, what's really going on? Or, you know, talk to me, mom, are, are you okay? And just opening up a space for a conversation you, you look for at your me to like, <laughs> you're being there for me. Yeah. You know, this little seven year old is Gosh, asking. Yeah. I remember one time my son across the room, I was in the kitchen and he was in the living room and he looked at me and he's like, Hey mom, you okay? <laughs> like he knew yeah. I needed to share something and for, for our youth and our But kids in order for him to be able to have that awareness and to n stop and notice that maybe something's not okay with you and then have the courage to even ask you like that, there's a lot that goes on in order for him to develop, to get to that stage. That doesn't just happen on its own. Yeah. You know what I mean? He has to really be comfortable with who he is. He has to have been brought up in a, an environment where all of that is is championed and it's welcomed and it's just part of the air you're breathing. Yes. So he's coming out of these leadership courses and he's, 
you know, sometimes your kids, when they're developing like that in, in some of those courses, they might come out and challenge you. I'm sure you've been challenged by your own kids too, right? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I've been put in my place probably many times, but it's such a beautiful process because they're such a part of my personal growth and having me look at me. And, then the, and it's funny because as an observer, I'm watching them challenge you, but they're doing it in a respectful way. Absolutely. And I think that's because we're teaching them how if you're going to challenge somebody, you're going to challenge them like this. And these are the words you're going to use. And your come from is not going to be as a know it all or you have the right answer, but you're going to do it in a subtle way, more like a question, question. form. So mm -hmm. we're teaching them mm -hmm. in these leadership courses things like uh, a simple eye contact. Here's an example. We'll do an experiential exercise in this leadership course where uh, they're all in a line facing each other. And it's just, you know, 30 seconds of shaking hands and making eye contact mm -hmm. or introducing yourself or saying hello or, you know, we're, we're in there uh, in the trenches teaching them these interactive uh, ways to connect with each other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think in, in those moments, it's not just about two because oftentimes even in their in their young experience, right? They haven't had those experiences where they stop and, you know, have that eye contact or really look at people when you're talking to people or introducing yourself or shaking a hand. So at first it feels uncomfortable, right? But we're about that. Let's be, okay, so let's understand this is one very powerful way to connect with people, right? How, and on top of that, it's also a way for you to step outside of your comfort zone and have that aha moment, that personal growth. Um, I think we're always creating opportunities for um, our kids to get out of their comfort zone and to have that personal growth or that um, those ahas like and get used to that feeling. Mm -hmm. Get used mm -hmm. to, oh, this makes me a little bit nervous, but I'm going to do it anyway, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's what we teach them is that that's where the juice is. Mm -hmm. It's And it's kind of an oxymoron, but it's like be comfortable being uncomfortable or get mm -hmm. used to being uncomfortable because that's where growth is. And the leadership course that we teach is really the it's the whole crux is all about getting out of your comfort zone. But we're doing it in a fun, inviting way. Like we'll do little uh, games, mm -hmm. experiential exercise. We, I, what I love most are the team building games. Yes. Because um, we're always challenging them. And, and it's fun to, to watch some of them really like you'll see them like their fear will come up, you know, and to watch them work through that and to be able to overcome it those fears and have those interpersonal breakthroughs that, I mean, it's priceless. Absolutely. And I think it's so, it's so great to watch the different places where they kind of, well, this is out of Johnny's comfort zone, but this is totally in, you know, Luke's comfort zone and the, whoever, what it's just, it's interesting to observe and watch them and to be able to provide lots of opportunities for them all to get out of their comfort zone where sometimes for some it's just out of their comfort zone to even speak up and share in class. So when they do, we get to really acknowledge them for that and thank them for sharing and, um, and notice that they did step outside of their comfort zone where for some they're sharing all the time. They want to be the one speaking. And so uh, it's just providing a lot of opportunity and then also really acknowledging them when they do, you know, and they step through that and they have that feeling and growth and also bringing a, a consciousness to it. You know, you just you you just did that. You just come, stepped out of your comfort zone. You grew this much more or this much more, however you grew. But let's recognize that and acknowledge you for that. I think that's one of the biggest components that we have in in um, our workshop. And, I, and it's not necessarily because we've designed it in there, but because of the context of the people that are delivering it. That's just part of uh, how they're wired is. And they get the value of validating someone it's almost like a like a spot award. You, mm -hmm. you know what a spot award is? No. It's almost like if you're in campus and uh, a campus supervisor is, you know, just roaming around the campus and they spot a teenager or a student pick up a piece of trash when no one's looking and put it in the trash can, you're going to go, okay, Mike gets a spot award I because I you. spotted you doing something mm -hmm. of greater value or, or higher integrity. So I think it's like our facilitators, we come from the, we're looking for opportunities to validate you, to spot that, hey, I saw you. And because I saw you, I want to validate you. You don't know how much validation that does for a kid to know that they're being seen and they're being watched and everything that they do that they're proud of. Not only are they proud of themselves, but two or two or three other adults come over and go, hey, good job. I saw you do that. I saw you take that risk. I saw you. I saw your face. You were afraid and you overcame it anyways. I'm so proud of you. So to get that kind of validation um, in a classroom setting 
uh, where it's just it's just like breathing is just a whole different environment really encourages your kids to want to keep developing and keep learning rather than being in a class where information for 45 minutes is just being spewed out mm -hmm. and it's your job to grasp and grab stuff um i don't know today's kids don't seem like we're they're wired with that kind of discipline to be able to sit there and see the value of a teacher standing there spitting out information that's why a lot of them say i'm bored well you're bored because um you're you've been stimulated for one right mm -hmm. they grew up in a world these kids grew up in a world where it's everything stimulated you know uh, music and the internet and they're used to swiping so fast to to go through information so quick to sit still for 45 minutes and hear a lecture is not happening anymore. Well, for my kids, definitely not. I mean, that's, I, you, you've seen my kids in the classroom. I mean, or in the, in our setting, you know, which is uh, not a classroom setting. We're, you know, very comfortable and we sit together kind of circled up. Um, but still, they don't want to sit still for too long. They want to be stimulated because of the world around mm -hmm, them and how mm -hmm. stimulated they are. Um, it but doesn't we, mean there isn't them... a value to being able to uh, hear what other people say. Absolutely. And... and there's a lot of that. And there's a lot of that where that we are aware that we have to teach some of these kids uh, to stretch their capacity to be able to sit longer. Mm -hmm. Because there's going to be times in the real world where you are going to have to sit in a business meeting for an hour or two hours. So you have to learn how. We're trying to challenge those kids to stretch that a little bit more. more. But but I think we're it's like we're meeting them where they are first mm -hmm. and letting them know that they're not bad and wrong because they can't sit for an hour. And then inviting them to stretch that time limit a little bit more and we're in there kind of fanning that flame and championing them on yes yeah. absolutely and that first year we also saw a lot of that growth in our learners right where um they came in and you know it's homeschool setting so wiggle it's, bottoms yeah wiggle bottoms for sure i still have <laughs> i still have wiggle bottoms a lot of but, adults have wiggle <laughs> bottoms too <laughs> but um and then watching them learn how to like sit down and you know take notes and uh be able to to hear the a lesson be delivered and or not take notes a lot of kids don't take notes in today's world mm -mm. so we draw pictures yes. they draw pictures yes. right so we're so <laughs> how, so what i love most about what we're doing is we're open to teaching in a different way yes. um ways that that meets them where they are individually and we're not rigid we're able to just kind of keep rolling with it to come up with something to get them to 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 still learn mm -hmm. in their way that mm -hmm. works for them yeah, absolutely. It gets me excited, and I wanted to just kind of come back to, the, like, the acknowledgement piece, too, um, because there's another nugget and layer of that that I think is so amazing that we're also – giving these students which is not just to be acknowledged but to learn how to step into that role of acknowledging other people and that's been a really powerful ob observation for me is watching these young kids now not just let us be the only ones acknowledging each them they are starting to really look at each other and say hey I really you know that was really cool that you you know, I saw that you were nervous and you did that anyway, or that was really cool that, yeah. you know, you were such a good friend in that moment, or I noticed how, how, what a great sibling or sister you are to your sister, because we have some siblings in the class, and they're learning how, and I think that's just such a leadership quality to have to say, hey, I see you, and they're learning that skill Isn't as that well. Isn't amazing that mm -hmm. when our facilitators are giving themselves permission just to show up like that, they're actually modeling that for the kids, and then to see the kid pick it up, and then do it right in front of you and you're like oh my god <laughs> like this is working right mm -hmm. they are sponges they are picking that up and they are serving that back up before we go on a quick break i, wa I want you if, if you if you're interested in what we're talking about and to learn more about learning centers in general or even learning about evolve if, if you're on facebook and go to our facebook page search up evolve life center for learning we kind of documented a little bit of our first year mm -hmm with videos and Facebook lives. And so go back and look at some of that stuff and it'll really pull you in, but it'll also tug at your heartstrings because when you see these little kids that are all lit up and excited and chanting, and it's just a beautiful way to learn. And I'm really excited for it. So stay tuned for more of the Alex Rubino radio show right here in your hometown station, KHTS. Stone Oven, the healthy alternative. You've never tasted a sandwich like this before. Gourmet bread cooked before your eyes. Stone Oven at the food court at Valencia Town Center. Save at the best Santa Clarita restaurants. Restaurant Row, where everything is half price. Click on hometownstation.com and discover incredible savings. Online or at our radio station, everyone saves with Restaurant Row. Check it out at hometownstation.com. Restaurant Row, where everything is half price. 
Have you heard about Assistance League Retail Store? For a good time and a great deal and bargains that are an amazing steal, there are friendly volunteers ready to share a smile. So come on in and stay a while. We take donations on gently used goods and proceeds from our sales stay in the neighborhood. So for a great buy and a special find, come visit our store anytime. Assistance League Resale Store located at 24369 Main Street in downtown Newhall. Men, are you feeling tired, stressed, or just don't have the energy you used to? Did you know this could be related to decreased testosterone levels? Luckily, there's a safe, effective solution. Weeder Prime helps support healthy testosterone levels with clinically tested key ingredients. Just two capsules of Weeder Prime each day can help change your mood, energy, focus, body fat, and lean muscle. Feel the way you felt 10, 20, even 30 years ago. Rediscover your prime with Weeder Prime. To find a retailer near you, visit WeederPrime.com. That's W-E-I-D-E-R Prime.com. Your hometown station, KHTS. And welcome back to the Alex Rabina Radio Show. I'm in the studio today with Aaron Aquaviva. Today we're talking about Evolve Life Center for Learning. And we've in the, the first segment of the show, we talked a little bit about homeschool learning and what it's like in today's world when it comes to homeschool uh, families and, and how it's evolving. And it's not the traditional way where, you know, as, as a parent, it's up to you to teach your kid. Now it's more of a village mentality that there are these learning centers that are sprouting up around you that they're using their special, unique uh, talent and gifts to specialize and go, hey, we're going to shine our light and this is what we're about. And if this is something you want your kids to learn, uh, come to us and bring your kids here and drop them off for a day once a week or twice a week. And this is what we're going to teach them. And our light happens to be emotional intelligence and leadership development. And uh, we're going to create a safe space for your kids uh, for us to ask them questions about what they're thinking, what their thoughts are, what they're feeling to just help them really be self-aware. I think that's the crux is that we want to develop kids that have a high level of self-awareness so that they can articulate themselves in the world in a way that you just, you're you're blown away by it. you're like man who is this kid you know uh i want him on my team or i want i want to hire this kid because he or she is just brings a, a connection a, um an energy a liveliness uh there's a lot of kids that are very intelligent in today's world and there's something missing inside of them there's there's no spark in some of these kids you can have the highest iq uh, but when you're going to an interview, and I've been a part of a lot of interviews for some of these um, Fortune 500 companies, and it's so heartbreaking to see a kid with a, a PhD or a master's degree, and they're coming in, and during the interview, they can't even make eye contact with you very long. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I, I want to hire you because of your credentials, but, uh, you know, our company, it's we're a people-based company. We're a team here, and I don't, I can't see you fitting in because – you're underdeveloped emotionally and I need, and I need that. I need somebody that's going to come in, have a passion, have a purpose. And, and those are the, those are the kinds of kids that some companies are looking for. Um, and if you want your kid to be something like that, then uh, you're going to have to, if you're not doing it or if you're too busy for it or you, or you are open to the village mentality, bring them to us. That's what we love doing. And we'll fan their flame. Absolutely. And uh, I think in today's world, when we see students, kids not students but yes students as well um with the world of social media and things like that um that have people behind a screen oftentimes connecting in that way you know yes they might be connecting with a friend or making a comment um but however it's lacking in that um that human connection and being present in a situation together i, I call it more informational connecting mm -hmm. like you're connecting with information um there are words on a screen that has you make sense of those words and then go, oh, that's what my friend's going through. But it's not sitting across from you telling you being vulnerable and letting you see the pain that I'm struggling and have you connect to that pain and be, feel compassionate for me. And all of that in today's world is slowly <laughs> going to sleep. Right. I think that's why it's so important that we do – this and have this focus on emotional intelligence and social emotional skills 
and development more so today than we used to see in the past. I think kids in the past socially connected. There wasn't anything taking them away from that. They were out in the streets playing, you know, knocking on each other's doors. We don't see that as much today. So, so then it's our job to notice that shift, but to however still provide them the opportunities to connect in that way, or else we're going to just completely shut down. There isn't compassion. There isn't empathy. We see that now in the world. And how do we grow that back into what we're doing and how we humanly connect. Yeah, one of the things that really scares me is when I read these articles about these youngsters who are so disconnected as they're go- growing up um, from from people and humanity, whether they're being picked on or bullied or they've decided for themselves they don't fit in. And slowly what they start doing is they start disconnecting from human contact and connection. And what happens is they, those kinds of kids go into a really dark place. Um, you know, they get, uh, they, they, they get depressed. Um, they start to in, go into their mind and make up these stories that everyone's against them. And when you're in a dark place, um, you're so disconnected from love from uh, warmth, from welcomeness, from a pre- being appreciated and valued, that you, once you go down that road, it's, it's very challenging and daunting to, to save those people, to get out there and get them and bring them back mm-hmm. to love. And so if we can s- have these programs that just are reminding us every day that you are important, and you do matter. And it's not coming from your mom and dad. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times I'll have kids, I'll say, don't your mom and dad tell you how much they love you? I've, I've watched them. You know, because I've been close uh, in personal contact with some of these kids. And I've watched their families. I'm like, your dad tells you he loves you all the time. And the re- common response is, but that's my dad. He's Right? They live in this. They're supposed to say that. Mm-hmm. But how awesome, is, how awesome of, of it is to have your aunt validate you. Your teacher validate you. Your your uh, your high school uh, football coach or somebody out in the community just look at you and go, "Hey, I like what you how you shared that. I like what you did. Um, that's amazing. That that's a great quality." So just to affirm kids, that's not mom and dad is such a powerful gift as well to have, and to ma- have it every single day is pretty amazing. I think so, and that's why I also love the growth of our team, too, to have more people in there um, validating them, Mm -hmm. supporting them, um, holding a space for them to, you know, kind of problem solve and be who they are, be who they are and create what they create. Um, And building that team, we have more people seeing them and validating them, and I think that's really important, especially because my kids are in the program, so they get a lot of me. Yeah. Uh, and And I feel really fortunate and grateful that we are, you know, building that village. And not all teachers are, you know, equal. And, and I'm not saying that like a good and bad. But what I mean is that, you know, as a teacher, if you have the mindset of I'm going to class today to teach something, it's their job to see the value and listen and retain and absorb what I'm teaching. That's a certain mindset, right? Mm-hmm. And that could be and they could be the, one of the most amazing teachers in the world with so much knowledge. But if you have a different teacher with a different kind of mindset, like, no, it's my responsibility to figure out how to get these kids <laughs> to hear me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to alter myself every day, and I'm going to keep reinventing myself such that the information I'm sharing is actually landing and that they're absorbing it and that they're actually not only absorbing it, but then they're practicing it right in front of me. So you have, you know, di- those are just two different models, but there's multiple models of, t- of teaching. The one that really excites me is the one that takes responsibility for how they deliver it, the information, who they're being when they're delivering it, and then also taking responsibility or a portion of the responsibility of how my kids are actually, if they're not, if this didn't land, then, then, then I need to figure out how to say it in a different way or, yeah. or, or add more excitement to it or tell, start telling more stories or getting them hooked into the information I'm trying to teach them. Absolutely. I think that's the, the importance of vulnerability and, these, and mm-hmm. our coaches allowing themselves to say, oh, this isn't working or you know, how many times I've had to step back and look at this like this didn't land with my kids. Maybe it landed with some of the other kids. But So how can I work in a setting constantly looking at myself? And I think it'll, you have to let your guard down to, d- to 
be able to like you said and be grow vul- and, and be vulnerable look at yourself and learn yes even even as simple as for being a facilitator or a coach or a teacher in your vulnerability just looking at the class and going you know what i don't know that answer mm-hmm. <laughs> or you know what mrs so-and-so made a mistake or mr bina made a mistake this time that's just another example of hey we're all going to make mistakes or, hey, and then turning that into a learning lesson right absolutely and let's figure it out together yeah let's learn how to be yeah. a team and i don't have all the answers maybe you can teach me this one there you go maybe you have and that takes answer. again vulnerability some humbleness there takes some inner qualities some inner qualities that have to have been nurtured and developed and those are kind of some of the people that we're looking for too we're so if you're if you're listening to this podcast and you're excited about what we're saying and you feel like you would fit in uh as a teacher uh you know with, with credentials and probably even not with credentials right i think um wh- whoever if you're passionate about something and you have something out there that you want um, these kids to know about, but you have those qualities of, you know, willing to learn from them and, and just have this space of this ebb and flow where we're all learning and we're all growing and we're all willing to personally grow and, and be vulnerable with something that you're just burning to share, to teach people, to a passion that you have. And um, I think those are the people that we're looking for. Yeah. And I, and I would normally say like-minded people, but today I'm going to say like-hearted people. Mm. You got to be like-minded, but you also got to show us your heart too. Mm-hmm. We, want, we want authentic people because, from what I've noticed of of teaching and working with kids and coaching and mentoring kids for 20 plus years, is that they first have to feel you mm-hmm. before you before they before they even trust you and are willing to allow some of the information uh, to to be absorbed. They 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 really have to know that you care. And uh, you can, again, be the most smartest person in the world trying to share that information with them. But if they have, they don't feel connected to you, they don't feel something authentic about you, it's just all they're hearing is wah, 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 wah. So you really have to have this authentic uh, way about you that, that just these kids fall in love with you. And once you have their heart, then you can just now just give it away as much as possible. And then and, and they'll take it all in. Yeah, you hook them. You hook them with your heart. Yeah, for sure. So tell us a little bit about how we can get a hold of your you, people are listening right now. How do they get hold of us or you and how do we sign up? So a couple of ways. Um, you can email us at Evolve Life Center info at gmail.com. That's Evolve Life Center info at gmail.com. And um, you can personally call me. I'm, I'm taking calls for people that are interested. 661-904-4911. Um, and those are, those are the two best ways right now, I think, to get signed up. We have a registration form, but that, uh, that link and URL is way too long. Thank you for always being here with me. I appreciate your partnership. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Absolutely. That's all the time we have. Uh, thanks for joining us here on the Alex Rubino radio show right here in your hometown station, KHTS. KHTS.